We uh, yeah, this is this is a really cool panel. I'm so <laughs> excited. And actually, you know, some members of this panel we didn't even know were coming until two hours ago. Uh, that'd be uh, Quincy here, uh, <clears throat> who I actually tried to come uh, weeks ago, yeah. but you weren't sure. And then two Last hours minute. ago, I find out. Yeah. Musicians improvise, you know. So we have to... yeah, 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 it's really really cool. And um, <clears throat> but we have we, we we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, uh, how uh, technology and music harmonize and how uh, technology can help uh, accelerate the, uh, the, the, the access to and the spread of music and how music uh, can certainly help popularize technology. And, uh, and there is a very close tie and I think that will come, come through. Actually, one thing that all four of these guys have in common is and we found out even more about that a moment ago, they're all tech nerds. Uh, Big time. Uh, uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Che was telling me he started out uh, sitting in, uh, in, in record stores. Or no, no, in music, uh, music stores, stores. In music stores until they'd throw him out. They would like, tolerate him for two hours or so, but he would sit there and tinker with, uh, with, with synthesizers and things. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, well, uh, Quincy, he was always a tech nerd also. And then that was the only way that you were able to... Um, uh, well, that, the, the music was the only way you were able to sort of access the technology. Get my tech rod. There was no internet back then, so sampling was like the techiest thing I could think of that was creative, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And these guys, of course, have taken uh, the way you popularize music um, through, through, um, through technology and, and social media to a, a different level um, <coughs> in, in, in K-pop. So let me just sort of take you through who these guys are a little bit. Um, Che and I, we've known each other for, God knows, half of our lives for 20 plus years or something. We actually met as I was, well, you know, I, I feel younger than I am. And you know, the, the scary thing is, I don't know what it is with the, the stressful life we live in technology, but these guys aren't that much younger than I am. And they just look so much younger. They just... Look what, what, what drugs and alcohol can do. I mean, what, 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 what clean living, what clean living can do uh, for, for, for keeping you young. But um, no, so, so Jay and I, we met uh, on the little island of Mustique as I was, and, and really became good friends, as I was there to just sort of cleanse myself and have seven days of just beautiful harmony, exercise a lot, play tennis, read a book. And then my first night, I would go walk down to the uh, to the to the local yeah, uh, Basil's bar. bar, and I see this table with 12, 14 beautiful blonde women, and these four, you know, not so blonde guys, and and and, and I'm just looking over, and I just can't stop by paying attention, and and yeah, you know, it's just too intriguing to to not go up and ask, and so we uh, we we ended up having a meeting of minds, and I became the the odd one out for. A week that was not uh, uh, quite as healthy as I anticipated, but it was a heck of a fun one. <coughs> Good for uh, the spirit. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we, we, we've since uh, become really great friends. And my son, who's also in the music industry, essentially was discovered by this guy almost 10 years ago uh, when he brought him into the studio after my son had sat on a plane on the way to L.A. and written a song uh, called... He was in the conference room of the plane... Uh, and he was just writing, he, he was bored, he was 15, and he was writing a song called Going to L.A. And then you took him into the studio and actually recorded it. First time he was ever in a proper music studio. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's really how everything comes full circle. Now that, now his son writes for his company. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty, pretty interesting. And, um, and, and uh, well, Quincy, 
Uh, oh, uh, by the way, also I should say about Che. Besides, just the way I how I met him, he's a multi Grammy winning music producer. He's worked with so many of the big ones. Uh, it's just so impressive. But both these guys together, kind of, are behind and, and have produced pretty much all the big names in uh, in hip hop uh, and and, and you know, rap. Now we just got to do your album. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, and I'm working on, I'm working on. He's already and, on his world tour. Yeah, 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 yeah that's fantastic. And, and and Quincy is well as a family. He's got more uh, on his walls, at least at the uh, at, on on Daddy's walls. There are there are more there are more Grammys and and uh, Academy Awards that I've ever seen anywhere in the same place. But probably because there aren't any more in any other place. But you uh, you're a Grammy winner uh, uh, in your own. Uh, right, and you are, you produced pretty much, you've been involved in working with almost every single major hip-hop artist. And a lot of the icons like Tupac, Dre, you know, Ice Cube, we all kind of grew up together and came up, so I remember going to their house yeah. when we were like 16, so. Yeah, that's very friend. cool. And and uh, with, 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 with Che, when I first met him, it was him and Dr. Dre who were you know, two of the of, of, of the four black guys with the 14 up long. Once again, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so, um, yeah, uh, uh, but but uh, but anyway, funny story, though. So, so Quincy, of course, is, is half Swedish. Yep. And, uh, and extraordinarily famous in Sweden. Uh, obviously in the world, but in Sweden, he is like, you know, he's God. He was, uh, he was the, uh, the most famous judge on Idol. Uh, uh, in, 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 in Sweden, but he also you know, has done so many cool things there. But the, one of the funniest stories, because of course, you know, his father is black and, uh, and his mom is this blonde, blue-eyed Swedish girl, so he's got blue eyes. And this is one of the craziest, funniest stories, but we're going to get into the technology a bit in a moment, but, <laughs> but I, just first. Cannot, I cannot but tell this story. So we're going to a 4th of July party. I invited Quincy to, uh, to, to come to this 4th of July party in Malibu. Uh, he shows up, but they won't let him in because I put Quincy Jones the third, but the security guys, of course, identified Quincy Jones, the name, with the second. But who keeps track of who's the second, who's the third? So ultimately, when my phone finally, someone gets through to me, after he patiently is sitting there being so kind and sweet, which your dad actually thought was just so amazing and how you were so humble and sweet and just didn't make a stink which your dad said he would have made a stink uh it, 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 they, they call me and they say we got a delusional white dude out here who thinks he's quincy jones <laughs> uh it was pretty funny actually <clears throat> and 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 these guys well we met not so long ago uh about a month ago when and and by the way so Chris Lee and his family, they, and his uncle, they created the, the genre of K-pop. SM Entertainment you know, just came up with this idea of we're going to create a, 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 a new music genre, and it was K-pop. And, uh, and so therefore, of course, I refer to, to Chris as the king of K-pop, which pretty much everybody does. But I had the pleasure of introducing the king of K-pop to the king of Sweden uh, three or four weeks ago in Seoul, Korea, which is kind of cool. And then, of course, my son calls, who doesn't call anybody the boss because he believes he is the boss, calls him the boss, which is really kind of cute. Uh, I never thought he would be humble enough to call anyone his boss. Now he writes K-pop. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He does, he does, he does. And, uh, and a lot of big hit sections, which is kind of cool. I'm very proud, proud Papa. And, uh, and then John, of course, has really led the charge of popularizing K-pop outside of Korea. And uh, and works with all the artists and uh, and you're the well in charge of international strategy and planning. <laughs> yes, which is very uh, you know, it's, it's very cool because K-pop has of course become a global phenomena the way no other genre has become so quickly. And the fact that that what, what's so impressive is that they don't even sing in English, but yet the rest of the whole world uh, embraces K-pop now. But that's all. You know, it obviously is due to incredibly clever, clever marketing, but it wouldn't have really been possible without technology and social media. So, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. So, um, well, I think we sort of start from from left to right, and uh, and interestingly enough, sort of the the. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about how uh, Che, how we, what you talked about earlier uh, uh, when we sat and and had a little prep chat about how. 
technology and, and, and music has sort of come to merge into one uh, with you. And by the way, I had the pleasure of seeing Che in action doing that because I brought him in as chairman of the advisory board of one of the most successful tech companies I've ever invested in and I've ever been on the board of, which I'm still on the board of. But, um, but I want you to share with us a little bit, please. Well, did you want to start with how hip hop sort of even before technology came, and then and then that's like made fine. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah because actually, this he made is a the really old dude who actually I, yeah. Made I'll a go great back point. to the old school. So hip hop was always sort of a viral culture, right? So like I would go with my dad on tour, and everywhere we went, I would find break dancers. You know, didn't matter if they spoke the same language, we all understood each other because of our common culture, which was hip hop. So when social media came around, you know, we were already a viral culture. It's it, we just had to apply it to technology, but it was already kind of worked like that. So so tech and hip hop has always had a close relationship. So if you look back at like the old Easy E and E40 videos back in the 80s, I don't know if you guys know those records, but they were like seminal records in hip hop, and that was the first time where youth culture was introduced to technology. They had these big Motorola cell phones. They called them bricks, you know, and they had the pagers. Easy E had his pager. And so that was like the first time where, where music became an influencer for something in technology. So that relationship has always been there, you know. And then furthermore, yeah. as, as producers, you know, the music industry, I believe, was one of the first industries that used apps to perform all the tasks. So if we wanted to put reverb or do anything, we would go to our, you know, black and white computers way back then. Um, Atari computer, I think I had. And um, we used apps for everything. So we were conditioned to see the whole world through the lens of apps. So if we needed to get something done, we were like, where's the app? So when the internet came and when the iPhone came and all that, it was already second nature to us. So that's kind of where the relationship started. Yeah, and I can expand on that in terms of, uh, I worked with uh, Mr. West uh, for the last seven, eight years, and he is definitely one of the foremost future thinking, forward thinking artist. So when we first started out, you know, he was one, uh, first of all, he had one of the biggest blogs that had well, one of the tremendous traffic, you know, even before, he, you know, had he understand what traffic meant in advertising, he could have monetized it, you know, t 20 times over, but he didn't understand that. What he understood was the reach. So he created this blog years ago called Kanye University that used to just have millions of, you know, millions of visitors daily. And from that, he knew, you know, he, he knew that was access, that was reaching, you know, an audience expanding his base. And, and he was one of the first people to really have a great understanding of incorporating other to aspects of art. You know what I mean? Really like pulling painters into his world, pulling filmmakers and visual artists into his world, pulling architects into his world for stage design and things of that nature. So he expanded the culture of hip hop even that much more, you know, with the, with the use of art. In, in global art, but then also with the use of technology and really having just an early understanding of what this could mean in terms of reach. So, you know, that was in our in our whole time there, that was always at the forefront of any meeting we had, any project we had, any any which which it's actually segue into products, which obviously now if you ask Kanye if, if he does music now, he'd tell you he sells sneakers. So yeah, that's literally what he does now. So, you know, it was it was through the use of, of, of technology that we were able to, you know, expand this guy's reach and, and, and so forth. And I credit him with with being one of the first, you know, a lot of artists, even as I think we're intimidated by the Internet and social media initially. I think it was a daunting thing. It was like, what is this? What is this? You know, how do we incorporate this? Is, is this going to saturate our brand? Is this going to ruin, you know? So he was one of the first ones to understand that this is an opportunity, that this is this is reach. You know, all of a sudden I can take my audience from two million to 20 million, you know, and um, and we've been and and it goes all the way forward. Fast forward to today, you know, when you if you're an artist and you go into a record label now, you could have an amazing demo. The first question they ask you is, what's your social media stats? What's your statistics? You know, what's your reach? They're looking for you to own, already build your own fan base your own, you know, your own community, even before you get in the door, before they even decide to invest in you. And, you know, and so the, the use of technology is really, I mean, we all know about what streaming has brought back into the music industry. The music industry was a dying industry. 
you know, um, they weren't monetizing piracy was, you know, obviously the ma- piracy was a bigger industry than the music business was. So streaming, which is once again, technology to someone coming up with a clever solution of how to re-monetize this sort of this, this asset that was this dying asset and bring it back. And now, you know, with the, the use of data and AI, once again, the reach is, is broadening again. And then, you know, that segues into what, you know, these guys are doing over here in Korea, which is, you know, I mean, the U.S. companies are studying what they're doing. That's how phenomenal what they're doing is. So I will pass it over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know if you want to start with a little... Uh, the video clip or uh, you want to say a few words first? Yeah, maybe I'll introduce that and yeah, I'll play it. Um, so yeah, uh, as, as he is, so I'm from the SM Entertainment, which is um, uh, situated in Seoul in Korea and one of the uh, biggest record label and many companies in Asia right now. Uh, and they did create the K-pop. <laughs> yeah. So the SM is like, yeah, my whole oh, name is Mr. Suma, and this, like, you know, the uh, initial. So uh, before he uh, found this company, like, three years ago, he actually studied not music, but um, he studied, like, robot and computer language in the United States. And after he come, came back to Korea and he found this uh, record label, and he started you know, creating his own, you know, uh, music and cultural things. Uh, so SM Entertainment, it, it sounds a bit, it could be like awkward, but we see the culture as kind of technical. So I uh, prepared a short clip about, you know, what does it mean, and I'll explain a little bit later. SMCT is our unique corporate philosophy and capability to create value through culture. The CT ecosystem is composed of three stages. Creation, fostering the creation of new and unique artists. Expansion, spreading their influence across national borders. And finally, exportation. It's the strategy that SM has been refining ever since we produced the first K-pop icon, the band H.O.T. The boy band H.O.T. was created through SM Entertainment's integrated network of casting, training, producing, and management. And they were getting global expansion based on popularity in China. Through strategic localization promotions and the aggressive expansion of overseas channels, groups like TVXQ and Girls' Generation have gained massive popularity and influence all across Asia. SM recruited Hang Kyung, who became SM's first Chinese artist when he joined Super Junior. XOK and XOM. By separating EXO into two units, we were able to transcend physical limitations by targeting both Korea and China at the same time. Neoculture technology, known as NCT. Under NCT, there is no limit to the number of members, as well as the composition. By localizing our production strategy to every part of the world, we are able to extend our influence beyond Korea to China, Japan, and Southeast Asia. SM artists have achieved worldwide popularity and a deep cultural impact due to our culture technology, CT. Setting a deliberate CT ecosystem, we are now in the final stage of its completion. Boom. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so um, it's a little bit like, you know, strange video from a record label, I know that. But um, (laughs) we create this like uh, culture technology from like 20 years ago. So cultural technology is the um, it's a way of producing not only music but also video, music video, and you know, social uh, uh, vital content and choreography and even like the um, the costume and the color of the shadow, etc. So we not only you know, making just cool 
you know, by a chance, but we always like studying how how can we make a cool video? How can you make you know if we make one hit song? What was the reason? What is the reason why people like this song? We study it and we make you know uh, kind of like a theory about it. But that's um that's a uh, one kind one part of our cultural technology for like uh, creation of you know content. And it's a way of uh, our strategy to uh, expand our uh, market not only in Korea but also to China, Japan, and entire Asian countries. And now we are trying to go not only Asia but out of Asia, like United States and European countries. And I will really hope someday that we can as well. And I would I would say one of the things that that has made that possible also I think is that you're not just writing music in. Uh, Korea, but you have your European headquarter where you actually produce a lot of the music, which is based in Stockholm, which obviously I think is kind of cool because Sway, our Euro we run Europe out of Stockholm as well, uh, where we actually, our office is the old music studios of Avicii, which is kind of cool. It's actually a really cool office. I'm digging it. Yeah, that's it, that's it. And, um, <clears throat> and, and my son has actually told me how he cranks out four to six of I mean, his team, four to six songs per week. And he does it doing exactly that analytical approach that comes from having spent time with you guys in that he analyzes each song. What what went wrong, what is right, what why did that succeed? What do we do? And then you know they just uh, put it into such a technological and sophisticated analytical uh, approach uh, apparatus that that, uh, that very few things fail and it just consistently goes really well which is something that you've done in the music industry that no one else has in the same format way in the same predictable way yeah I'd like to uh, expand on like because I don't even think he scratched the surface so I went and toured SM um, I, I just was so fascinated with their company and what they've done when you what they're doing as a record label and what they've expanded to, it's an empire. It's, it's, it's cafes, it's supermarkets, they have a hologram theater, they have a mall, it's, it's so, they have restaurants. So they've literally started with, you know, with, with a product, which is, with, you know, what was, I think the first artist was a boy band. And now, you know, it's like if NSYNC was, had done that, you know, so it's, it's phenomenal what they've done and it's just, it's 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 a deeper study. I mean, it's it's a it's it's what? How do you take a business and really expand it on that on that level and, and, and use one marketing tool to the maximum you know to its maximum reach? And I think they're just and now you see the global expansion. So I just it's phenomenal what they're doing because and the and the and the time that they're doing it in. You know that that's a testament to the data and the analytics and the study and the proof of proof of concept. You know, and that's what's so phenomenal to me. And obviously they have invested in something like, you know, he made a, you know, a point to the A&R and coming, you know, from Sweden. We, you know, Sweden and Scandinavia, which I spend a lot of time in, has amazing songwriters and talent because it's dark six months of the year. You know, and so they, 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 you know, they write songs, they study their instruments. They're some of the best musicians. They literally, they have some of the best musicians. So, you know, Korea was, to me, one of the first countries to really, you know, invest in A&Ring and, and developing in the U.S., we're actually doing. There's less talent development than there ever was. They're actually doubling down and tripling down on talent development, choreography. You know, fa I mean, the investment in fashion and styling and the preparation and the and the and the work these kids. I mean, I, you know, I've literally w sat in and witnessed them. You know, rehearsing and, and and the vocal training and you know, it's like Motown. You know what I mean? It really hasn't been done at that level since Motown. And, that, yeah, and then just the to, merchandising oh. that they that you guys do is just second to none. I was you know, when I was in Korea, my son of course took me into because he obviously was a bit proud of the fact that any record store he walked into, the top three most promoted records happened to be, you know, pr co-produced and right. and at uh, yeah, yeah written by, by him. So <laughs> proud Papa again. But uh, the uh, the thing that also amazed me was that they were everything from branded. Uh, mu music band branded fruit juices to uh, cupcakes to 
uh, coffee to, uh, I mean, there was nothing. There were caps and the usual things, but it was also taking it to an entirely different level. And then the fan loyalty is also, uh, uh, you know, second to none. You actually still sell hard copy records, uh, not because that's the way Half people a million, listen to it. But, but, Half but, a million physical copies for each artist that we Right yeah, here. which is incredible, but <laughs> largely nice. I think because the the, the 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 fans want the the posters, they want to feel that they have that physical, and how you manage to convince people of that is amazing. But it, it it must also, I'm assuming, have to do with social media impact and the way you've actually able to reach them through current technology available sure. now that wasn't there five ten years ago. So just to uh, piggyback on that and just explain, go into more details about the culture technology that Chris was just talking about, right? I mean, cu culture technology is the core value of our company system. So what it is is that, you know, we have this intellectual property that we're creating with artists, music, music video, and all this. And how are we going to maximize the profits, right? Uh, as a business uh, corporate, you know, we thought about this technology. I mean, back in the days, they didn't really just have that. The music was just about music and the lyrics so people listen to the music with the sound and if they like the lyrics they they fall into it but these days after all this technology and music video and fashion has been just dominating the whole entire world now this k-pop has defined as not just the music lyrics but also choreography music video and all this kind of cool technology you know that has been combined together with you know social network and marketing and promotions so with this culture technology you know, we are the record label and management company, but some people get mistakenly under, I mean, mis I mean, mistakenly think that we're the tech companies because we have been already investing a lot of different uh, tech companies around the world. Like AI. Like AI, drone, drone um, you know, TTS. I, I, don't, I don't really know much about technologies. But how are we going to utilize all this technology to maximize the profits with the, with the IP that we create? I mean, that's the whole core of the culture technology, culture technology that we, we, we value to, um, to expand our uh, intellectual property and even export to the global level. Just a quick question. How many of you are familiar with K-pop? How many of you have heard K-pop before? Really? Wow, that's exciting. So one of the reasons why, you know, you, we see this kind of K-pop phenomenon around the world. I mean, we have um, the slide, the first slide. Um, would you put it up for me? It's a hip audience. Um, yeah. We have on SNS. I'm we so have impressed. We have more hip investors and uh, <laughs> uh, entrepreneurs we invested in, which is what you are, most sure. of you, than I really thought. So, hey, a, a, a big, a huge applause for our audience who are so hip and busy. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really amazing. Very we, cool. We didn't really expect that. Yeah. I mean, around the social platforms, you know, um, just mainly Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Weibo that we just talk about, we have about 400 million followers, right? I mean, why? Why is K-pop so popular around the world? It's because of the technologies, right? I mean, just because we put out cool content, it's not like people are going to like it, but just because of this technology, internet, and this Google translation, whatever that we post on Twitter, automatically gets translated to their own languages. So people, you know, get to expose to our um, contents. I mean, one of the reasons why we still sell half a million just physical CDs, right? It's because of SNS. Because they get an access to, to purchase. And with all this Amazon uh, amazing uh, logistics and, you know, transportations and, <laughs> and all that technology supporting us, you know, we get to sell all, you know, all the CDs and our music gets stream, streaming, you know, about a billion <laughs> around the world. Not, you know, these days people just do not listen to the music just it's because they understand the language. But, you know, they make these connections with this technology. So we're even going into more deeper with, um, you know, with like AI and such as like drone. And we are even developing in a way that, um, you know, like TTS to record, you know, one of our intellectual property artists to record a paragraph. And, you know, we could kind of replicate their voices to you know, create all of the contents to maybe in the future with, with, with people like you guys will have a technology that my voice could get translated into different languages with the same voice sound, you know, and then even replicate it to a song <laughs> to be uh, singing on, on the song that Quincy or, or Che writes, you know? And I think in the future, I think 
it's going to be very uh, phenomenal. And I mean, we also do have publishing companies, but we don't really have to worry too much about, you know, all this rights and stuff because all this technology of blockchain, it's just blowing up and just helping us, you know, to even be able to organize a lot of different stuff. So, I mean, yeah. I, I think uh, he just brought up a really good point, though. He talked about rights. And, you know, everyone is familiar with IP intellectual property. So we're still, whether it's music, digital media content, it's still the same thing. It's IP. And that's that's one of the things we, you know, in terms of like one of the things they do in K-pop is they control that. You know, it's almost like it's almost like Ford, right? Where they control the whole mark, you know, the product line all the way from creation to distribution. You know, in the U.S. it's a little different, right? Because we have so, you know, the rights are become a different thing. Like, okay, Universal owns the master, so then uh, Snapchat, you got to pay us, you know, <laughs> and so forth. So it's a little bit different there, and that's where they have a unique advantage over the market. And they are really exploiting that advantage, and you see in the growth, of, in, in the amount of growth that they have. And, you know, one of the things that U.S. companies are, of course, now there's only like really three labels, right? There's really Warner Brothers, Sony, and Universal. And Universal make it sold any minute. So that'll be the next, that'll be the future of the music industry as we know it in the U.S. They will try to control that whole distribution. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you see one of those companies purchase one of the major Spotify or, 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 or partner or figure that out because they have to control it from master creation all the way to distribution. And that's, that's the last frontier. So I think one of the things that we really talked about now initially was how music can be popularized through technology, but it goes the other way around as well. And I know you've certainly mastered that. Well, both of you have. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about how then music can be used to popularize technology and, and product? I think what, what hip hop and K-pop have done, they've expanded beyond just being a genre. They've become their own culture and their own ecosystem and, and it expands into you know, products and culture and, and fashion and so on and so forth. So now these things can be monetized. So it's it's the art meets, com, you know, commerce conversation. Obviously, they used to be the same thing where, you know, you hire some celebrity to promote a product, so on and so forth. Now these celebrities are becoming their own companies. You know, um, Jessica Alba is an example, with honest. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had the unique experience of being at the forefront of two major stories in this regard. And one is, the first one is Beats by Dre. I actually named Beats by Dre. Um, I used to work with Dre, and same thing, the music business, the, the app, you know, it was, a, it was a dying thing. The, you, Jimmy and Dre were like, hey, what, what's next? What, you know, and, and they were very aware of the intersection of, of entertainment and products. So they were just trying to figure out what's our access point. What's, and so they leveraged that. They created a product. They leveraged it with athletes, music artists. They put it in videos. And, you know, and obviously they were actually just trying to find, they knew the headphone market was a massive market, this electronics market. They were only looking for a small niche thing. If that would have been a success for them, now they dominate it. They have 70% of the market now. So, I mean, hip hop, so I, like statistically, is the number one uh, music genre in the world right now. And I think that actually helped social media grow tremendously in the beginning. You know, it, it always over indexed on every platform. Organically, and and <clears throat> Quincy, you were very much part of uh, making hip hop global. I mean, you you are one of the people that work with everyone from Snoop to to Dr. Dre to to the guys to actually help make it and bring it mainstream. That's true. I mean, we were the first ones to to bring documentaries to mainstream television stations, and what they found is that our shows were were doing better than their own primetime productions. You know stuff that we produced in-house and just gave to them. So, you know, the power of the culture is incredible. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was quite funny that, uh, Quincy, tomorrow you're actually going to San Quentin, uh, not because he's done anything bad, but actually, uh, but actually because you're, uh, you're, you're shooting there and, uh, and doing something in, in terms of music documentary. Yeah, uh, there's, from... there's, there's a guy in there who, um, he's a Swedish um, producer who's in San Quentin now, and he started a program and um, uh, that would allow inmates to record without curse words and to express their feelings in a more honest way. And so they put an album together, and now they actually have permission to film videos and to release this album commercially. So um, uh, the guy I'm talking about, you know, he's been on TEDx speaking from prison. 
and has been able to create a positive movement from prison through social media. So Kim Kardashian's been in there to visit him. Kanye's coming next week. You know, so social media, you know, crosses all boundaries, you know. Even from inside of a jail cell. <laughs> and it creates change. Yeah, no, indeed. And, and from your perspective, you're obviously able to move, not only move your music out through technology, but you're also, of course, leveraging the music to, uh, uh, you know, as a commercial platform, as we said, but also to, uh, to popularize uh, technology. Or does that apply to what you're doing as well? Yeah. Um, so uh, my company is a label, but we had the uh, AI uh, department like seven years ago. So we just like, you know, talk about it. And also, we were studying about like long video, which is not only you know taking on your music video, but also as a like tra transportation. Uh, like two years ago, so um, that's because of like we believe the power of uh, self. So the founder of my company, Mr. Sumani, uh, he has been like talking about the future is going to be robot and celebrity uh, age from like five to seven years ago. Uh, there's like, you know, for them, there's like two steak house. Exactly same, you know, uh, quality of steak, same taste. So people, you know, go sometimes like, go this one and go this one. But one day, like, you know, Mr. Obama visit this steak house. After that, the visual this is, it's obvious. Like everyone goes this steak house. That's the power of the sound. So the for the for us like music is the kind of you know uh, it's a tool and it's um it's a platform uh, to make uh, a person who has a talent to become a celebrity. So you know our you know my company or maybe some other K-pop companies are you know having those like power of celebrity. So uh, for my you know uh, like 15 years of experience in SM entertainment, I uh, I was all, uh, the SM all uh, what uh, get offered from a lot of like tech companies like Samsung of course, but Tencent, you know uh, Microsoft, and now we are now talking with you know, Intel uh, about like immersive experience. Off the record, off the record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. Yes, so sorry. I think it's just uh, you know, fascinating. I'm so proud to and excited to call but, you all my, but my, not my friends. But now that, just to piggyback on what he just said, um, we're even looking into, we're in the stage of where we could create K-pop artists virtually, whether whether um, in in different colors of human skins, you know? I mean, we could just make a K-pop artist tomorrow, as, you know, as an Indian girl, you know, who sings virtually, and, you know, we could make her to look like a real human being with the technology that we have. And in that case, we don't even have to investigate to go out around the world to cast the talents. All we need is just technology with the great graphic designer. <laughs> and and I I'll know I know it. that you also written music <laughs> with technology. Well, yeah, we could. Can I write right, the song? But, but that is I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to open up for uh, for 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 some questions because we could keep on like this for for a very long time. I think it's fi fascinating, exciting. But but do we have some questions. Hi. Um, so you guys talked about how technology popularizes music, and music popularizes technology. Um, if you go back to the roots of hip hop with like the Grandmaster Flash, that was a like he used technology. It was a, the roots of hip hop was a technological advancement in itself, just yes. like wiring two record players together to yeah. make a whole new genre of music. Yeah. Um, and a similar thing with K-pop. So I was wondering. We've been talking a lot about computer software and AI today. So I was wondering if you guys, as mu music producers, if you see the, this technology, this new age technology, creating new genres of music. I do. I think it's you know obviously it started with the DJ, right? It started with the with the the forefront of EDM blowing up, right? That was you really saw where it was like okay, these guys created a whole new world. You know that that's a huge you know because of ticket sales and obviously the cost of entry is much lower, right? Because you you don't need a band up there, right? You can just have one guy. And doing any, and he's putting a hundred thousand, you know, a hundred thousand people in the seats. So that, that to me is, is, is in the modern era is a, is a perfect example of that. But you see a, a lot more experimental music. You have actually scientists now who create music. I've toured MIT's media labs recently and they have some, some amazing AI music being created. It's almost like robots creating music. 
So it's 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 uh, it you you see, and I think creativity. I think when technology and creativity meet, I think you know the possibilities are endless. Exactly, like the access, like someone in Korea can collaborate seamlessly with somebody in Sweden now online, and I think that access is creating automatic uh, new genres. You know, automatically creating new genres and hybrids. Actually, my question was about AI-generated music. So, have you tried uh, using AI-composed uh, music? Yes, we've already invested uh, two companies to uh, uh, compose uh, composing music and make a release uh, by AI uh, for last week. Any international hits already composed oh, by music? Not, not AI? yet. Uh, yeah, but um, I see a lot of potential from especially the you're trying to take my job one quick note though <laughs> one quick note too I think that um, because technology is ubiquitous now I think that the value of the human touch is going to go back up right? so it's how do you apply your personal creativity to these technologies and I think that's where the magic happens skin and you know just mixing how's the marketing come into effect there because I feel like there might be a strong criticism of replacing the human and of creating something which is especially you know if you go back to the origins of electronic music I'm also a DJ but you know uh, <laughs> I don't know what exactly future will look like but as of now there's a, already a virtual celebrities um, very active on Instagram making millions of dollars and you know whoever that created the character just take all that money, you know, because they don't really have to share the profits because they just have to Photoshop with with the Louis Vuitton or Gucci. And I don't know what that future look like. And you know, you know, I'm sure they're gonna be a trade off about the criticism. But I think what just Quincy has just mentioned, if that digital, I mean, digital and analog, you know, or the music or the technology comes together, combined together in a good way, I think it will just bring another uh, goodness to the world. And um, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you guys have any <laughs> feedback, I feel like you gotta use your that? superpowers for good, right? <laughs> <laughs> they can be they can be used erroneously, or we can use them for positivity. So hopefully, you know, we, we don't replace humans. You know, we ASCAP can, goes out of course. business, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> on on the really cool positive side of leveraging music and K-pop, I actually uh, love the idea that you are now, I guess, collaborating even with the World Scout Foundation That's in. Right, yeah. uh, in, in, in taking the world's largest youth movement of 54 million scouts that all are sort of, you know, John down there is in charge of, and, and, and uh, leveraging that against uh, the amazing popularity amongst the same, um, you know, kind of age category youth uh, of, of, of K-pop. And uh, I'm just excited to see what can come out of that. But it's interesting how you are really devoting yourself to do some good. And K-pop, by the way, is just the cleanest form of music in terms of, of, of sending good messages that are um, that, that are really encouraging and and and, uh, and and encourages sort of good behavior by youth, which is I think also quite refreshing. We became a tape. Yeah. I think we have time for one more question. They're telling us this gentleman. Okay. I have a request, and then I got a couple of statements. I want proof of life. That Quincy is not a robot. <laughs> I'm gonna have to prove that to myself first, man. You know, he's he's 85 now, and and he he's still six. 86, and he, I mean, there's we can't hang with him. I mean, he's his energy level and enthusiasm for life and new ideas and concepts and technology jargon, all that stuff. He's on it. So uh, I'm not sure myself. I have to say, he's one of my favorite entertainers in the world. And Thank I'm you. surprised I'm sitting here with the sun. I really am. Thank you. It's Thank exciting. You. Uh, the other comment I would make, and I just want to get back at you guys a little bit. I'm in the business of high-level strategy development and decision-making. And I really am opposed to celebrity-based decision-making. On the other hand, I was in three bands when I was in high school, college and graduate school a rap group right and I was horrible <laughs> so I didn't become a celebrity so I'm just jealous 
<laughs> we well, can I, I, think, I think a lot of us are opposed to celebrity based decision making in the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As producers, we, we have to, to manage a lot of that. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys are great. Thank That's you. That's where my hair went. <laughs> 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 yeah, I will tell one uh, quick story of how practically celebrity can be applied to amazing uh, good. It's from this summer when we were hanging out together. I get a desperate call from my son who says one of my artists in, is stuck in customs and can't get, can't get in. And I'm saying, what happened? Well, she came straight from a gig and she's dressed so amazingly provocative that they think oh, she's boy. a prostitute. <laughs> And I thought, that's the weirdest thing. Well, uh, I don't know exactly how to help, but you know what? I do have an idea, I said. L and then I said to, to, to Quincy, let's go outside. Let's record a short message from the two of us that we send to customs. I mean, to actually, to, uh, to my son and to this girl that they can play to customs. It was the funniest thing. So we just uh, say, no, she really is here to record music. She's actually a good girl. And we promised to send her back. <laughs> and then we sent that to customs. And then the funny thing was uh, that, uh, that then apparently the girl said, I've never been so well treated by customs. They were really mean to me first. But apparently Qu your friend Quincy is the most famous person in the country. They apologized to no end. It was really funny. Anyway, so we have one more question and then we're going to uh, call it quits. And I think, uh, you know, start, start entertaining the, the end of this and, uh, and start uh, having some food and drinks. But uh, go ahead. One more question from... or the future of, of uh, digital artists because, you know, you have your friend who's got the uh, holographic images coming forward and he, these artists are becoming timeless. And me. With, with Tupac. and uh, Oh, yeah. So, so that, that was actually part of that a little bit in terms of conceptualizing that. And I think you're right. I mean, with hip-hop, there's a lot... Most of our legends are deceased. And I think that that area of... Um, is underserved big time. And uh, about three years ago, oh, sorry. No, go on, sorry. No, no, no. I actually think. I yeah. thought you were done, I'm sorry. No, um, we also um, invest this, uh, we create a joint venture with this company uh, from Pasadena with, with this people who graduated from Caltech uh, called Oben. And um, we created this agency called AI Stars uh, in Hong Kong um, to, to manage this virtual artist around the world. Um, so, I mean, yeah, yeah. We're I mean, really looking into this AI future. <laughs> I mean, when you think about hip hop's icons, I would say at least half of them. Yeah, we just need to make a Tupac robot. Exactly. We just need, we if we had a Tupac first. robot, we, we can just make need movies. to be first. You heard exactly. here, so I, I need some investors. A Tupac exactly. robot. Exactly. Exactly. But I think it's underserved. I mean, you can do you know Broadway shows, all kind of stuff with yeah. these digital We're characters. So I think storytelling. Applying that to it, everything is is um, is very ripe for the taking. All right. Thank well, you. thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, what an engage, what an engaging audience we had. And and again, thank you for flying in uh, and uh, and for, uh, for for joining us for for this. I'm so pleased and happy and, and grateful. It's uh, been fantastic. You bet. All right. Thanks.